The joy of going to see live music is that it's a shared experience with a bunch of people you don't know. The stale sweat and the too closeness and the too loudness and the sticky carpet, the cues for the loos and the plastic pints of shit warm beer. It's not possible to share these joys through a screen. But all year I've been trying to make lemonade out of the lemons of our lockdown lives. So tonight I've got a bunch of cameras and a small collection of reasonable musicians and rather than try to replicate what it would be like for you to be at a concert, I'm going to attempt to give you something different, a more intimate experience, one that you can only get sitting where you're sitting now, front row centre, in your own house, on your own sofa, in your own undies, or the undies of a loved one. <laughs> I recommend, if I may, that you put yourself in front of the best speakers you own or stick on the best headphones you can find, because this music is a thing for your ears, so it's worth watching too, because my eyebrows will let you know when I'm being ironic. <laughs> and new shirt. <clears throat> Additionally, I recommend that if you are a drinker of wine or an eater of cheese, you are furnished with them. These are songs designed to be consumed with booze and dairy. If you are a recovering alcoholic vegan, perhaps a lime and soda and some corn. <laughs> When I play a live show, by the way, I have weeks to work out what I want to say, to improvise and let natural selection sort the shit from the wit. I don't have that luxury with this one, and so, lemons into lemonade, I've spent the gaps in our rehearsals over the last couple of days furiously jotting down my thoughts, and I'm going to read them to you like a nervous, narcissistic best man at a long and slightly ponderous wedding. <laughs> it's worth mentioning at the outset I guess, just in case you hadn't already gathered this, that Apart Together is not a comedy album. I don't think I would ever make a studio album of comedy songs because doing punchlines without an audience in the room is like having sex without someone there to hold the camera. I mean, what's the point? That's a joke, obviously. I own a tripod. See, no comedy. I've been thinking a bit about statues, not about when it's appropriate to tear them down, although I have thought a bit about that, and the answer is sometimes it's complicated, but about how art usually is concerned with taking raw materials, paint or clay or notes or words, and generating something. Whereas when you carve a figure into stone or wood, the artist is taking bits away to reveal a thing that has always been there. The finished product is an artifact of what's been removed the absent bits. Sometimes when we're away from people we care about, or they have died, which is a very effective way of being away, their absence feels more solid, seems to occupy more space than the stuff that's present. About a hundred years ago, a dude called Duncan McDougall tried to weigh the human soul, concluding somehow that it weighed 21.3 grams. I'm not that interested in the idea of souls, their existence seems to me unnecessary for a meaningful life, but I am quite interested in the figurative idea that loss has mass. Stick that on a bumper sticker. Honk if you're quite interested in the idea that loss has mass. This broadcast, on the other hand, risks being defined by the absence of songs. <laughs> this is the absence of you. Take a walk on the sand Cross Pont Neuf on my way to Saint Germain Love hearts on padlocks on wire in the mist Where young lovers kiss and swear to be true Echoes of ten thousand sighs of love And yet I feel only the absence of you 
out of a window on the 30th floor. Central Park shines with the coming of dawn. Through eyes rendered weary by jet lag and wine, I turn round to find there's a girl in my room. For a moment we kiss, but her vodka soaked lips taste only of the absence of you. In the not warm enough April sun With the workers who come To eat pret with no shoes But the grass to the side Of the patch where I'm lying Is flat with the absence of you This album I have made for my sins is a lot about time passing because, you see, I'm a, a little taken aback by it, this acceleration of time as you get older. I mean, it makes sense, obviously, that time accelerates. After all, one's concept of time is relative, and last year constituted about one fortieth of my memories, so of course it seems to have whizzed by. And I understand the science of it, that as you age, you have fewer profound, defining new experiences, so you build less new neural pathways, so your memories are less populated and time is concertinaed into the resultant gaps. But it's still sort of shocking. It physically hurts that my baby boy is 11, that my white wine in the sun girl is 14, that I have to put mascara on my beard so I don't look like a bogan Santa. And that 20 years have passed since I made my unreleased first album with my brother in the lounge room of our share house in Perth, Western Australia. Back then I was writing music for theatre, acting a bit, playing in bands, writing overly wordy songs. So nothing has changed, yet everything has changed. And if the next 20 years go by as fast, I'll turn 65 sometime tomorrow afternoon. 
Sarah and I have been a pair for over a quarter of a century, and in that time we've moved a lot. We grew up in Perth, lived in Melbourne for four years, London for eight years, LA for four, and now we're here in Sydney for the last three. And you'd think, wouldn't you, or at least I did, that moving would get easier the more you do it, but the opposite is the case in my experience. I wanted to write a song about breaking up with a place that feels a bit like a song about breaking up with a lover who you still kind of dig, but need to convince yourself you don't, so you spend your time itemizing their flaws, and in doing so, realize you even sort of love them for those bits too, yet still you know you gotta get the fuck out. <laughs> to drain the metaphor, in hindsight, I'm very glad we broke up with America, because reading the news about her now is like looking up an ex on Facebook and finding out they're a racist gangster selling ice on street corners trying to save up enough to buy a new spoiler for their jacked up yellow Mazda 3. <laughs> I mean, even just the breath control to say it is admirable, if not the content. <clears throat> Before we start, a brief glossary of terms. Febreze is a fabric freshener. Bronson Caves are in an old quarry in Griffith Park, right near where we used to live. They were used as Batman's car park cave in the old TV show. The Oaks Gourmet is a little deli that once asked me to leave because I tried to get a coffee and bare feet. UCB stands for the Upright Citizens Brigade, who are a brilliant, famous American improv and sketch troupe. Griffith Park is a massive park in the middle of LA, and the observatory is an observatory. You've seen it a lot in movies. Hollywood and Vine are the name of two famous streets for no reason. Gratitude is the name of a vegan cafe. All their dishes and juices have names like humble and adoring and gracious. And they encourage you to order by starting your sentence with the words I am. Like if you want to order the lentil butternut squash loaf, you have to say I am welcoming. <laughs> I mean, why? Why do they have to make it so hard to be vegan? As if not eating cheese isn't enough. <laughs> to punch up a script is to try and insert more jokes into it. And the 101 is a freeway. Check the locks and leave the keys Mouldy bath masked with Febreze Something's dead behind the refrigerator Some poor fuck will deal with it later I've spent the last ten weeks Squeezing out the sponge of friendships Plugging leaks Talked until there's no more to say I'm going away I'm leaving LA I'm leaving LA And the tourists say Please give me the directions to the Hollywood sign I always dreamt of coming here to see the Hollywood sign But I'm through the Bronson Caves One more okay coffee at the Oaks Gourmet I watch the players at the UCB Trying to improvise their way out of ennui Walking trails in the creep and dark Up to the observatory in Griffith Park there's too much light for stars anyway I'm getting out of this place I'm leaving LA I'm leaving LA Hey, I'm a studio executive who never made a thing Blaming others for their failures Taking credit for their wins Wiping the blood Hollywood and Vine 
store Spider-Man shouting at a stone Damn a stone dressed a la 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 land And in the distance in both its glorious dimensions The sign projects its shadow on the hill Russian bar machine gunned cops at LAX Malfunctioning departure board says we're boarding next Belt off, shoes off, jacket off, hat Don't need the attitude But I quite enjoy the subsequent pat down And I'm sat down as the A380 engine roars Pushed backwards as this tube of monkeys rumbles pause Looking forward to another 20 hours on a plane Not that the shit films on my brain I've been going slowly insane I've seen you sport and I don't wanna fade I'm getting out of this place I'm getting out of this place I'm leaving LA ugly hill I'm leaving LA I'm leaving hell I love England very much, but their summers are not to be trusted. Because of this, Brits drink in the summer days like a Labrador eats chicken, greedily and often to the point of self-harm. As soon as the sky is blue and the temperature is over about 20 degrees, you'll find them shirtless in car parks, bikini-clad on median strips, pink in beer gardens at 10 p.m. The Brits soak up the sunny days when they come because they know how soon they'll be gone. The obvious wisdom to be mined out of this is that we should endeavour to squeeze out every last drop of light and laughter and lager from the fickle summer days. Carpe the fucking diem. <laughs> but there's another challenge, which is learning to let go of them once they're gone. Maybe carpe diem needs an addendum like noctum amplexum, which, if Google Translate is to be trusted, means embrace the night. Although remember what my great granddad always said, Never trust a Latin AI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you very much. Fuck you. Perhaps if this concert goes well, I'll do another one, performing the songs from Groundhog Day, a musical I helped write. It relentlessly unpacks these themes, how to balance control with acquiescence, how to come to terms with the encroaching dark. But for now, I want to play you a song that I wrote in London years before Groundhog Day the song which set me on the well-trodden path to writing songs about life, clumsily disguised as songs about weather. It's called Summer Romance, and Sarah Belkner's gonna play the piano for me. Yeah, Belk. Her dress hides a shameful secret. <laughs> <laughs> She's married, though, so it's okay. Still disgusting. Wind blows the 
But I refuse to close the windows Whether I deny for one more day Let the leaves fall where they may I'm holding on Coatless I'm heading out Even though I know it's hopeless I'll take my battle to the streets Umbrella-less but undefeated I'm holding on I'm holding on Time wraps her arms around me like one of those time-lapse photographic sequences of autumn sending in her debt collectors to wreak havoc on the trees of Hargate Woods but I'm holding on I am holding on for one more day outside journey from security to gate 23 hey, maybe you notice me I wrote the song cause I had a spell I was delayed trying to get back to my babies 
can set me And I notice the keys, so I'm writing a song Women in SUV Porsches always look miserable I don't know why they're so sad Maybe it's the calories they could have had Filling them up with regret And men in cafes and ski resorts Trying to connect with their sons Look like they just want to hit them I mean, I'm sure that they dig them Underneath all the gear A young man in Air Jordans Just left me five dollars on the piano What do you know? Always hated those airport pianos Should be a law saying play And the theme from Beverly Hills Cop We'll get one of your hands chopped off I wrote the song on an airport piano I'm out of time, I just need one more little rhyme I gotta board that plane They're calling my name, so I'm writing a song Women in SUV Porsches Always look miserable Or is it only the Botox? They stick in their face to keep their looks from slipping They're kicking the can down the road And men in mansions on cold sacks Having their midlife affairs with the wife of a banker The banker is banging the anchor But sadly they're still gonna die A guy by in Subway Anxiously digs through his cabin bag, smiles when his wallet is found. Pays for his six inch, then forgets that his bag is unzipped, so the contents of it is disgorged in a jar of Viagra spills onto the ground. So it goes. Women in SUV Porsches always look miserable. And I know why they're so sad They thought they'd be happier than they were in their Fords But now they're bored of their Porsches And they're looking for more They're out there shopping for more And their husband's so fat and his new like for shorts Trying to pedal his way back to 94 Trying to wind back the clock to be four, to be four They had this boat and this house and this vital and mortgage To before they had bought all the things that they thought would fill the hole, but the goal keeps receding, and his hair is receding. There's this book he's been reading for six months, but the words just swim round the pages. The God has been ages since they made love, and the kids are on drugs with their ADHD and their anxiety. And the music is shit, and the time just keeps slipping away. And I'm simply praying and saying, They're calling my name, cause your flight's gotta go. When your flight's gotta go. A few months ago, my London theatre family lost, as well as all their jobs, a family member. Andre Tuzinski was a very important figure in the theatre industry in London and was a very good friend and a business partner and a gentleman. He died very suddenly in July on a beautiful sunny English day on a walk with his dog. He was not old. In any other year, I would have jumped on a plane to go see his family and be with my friends and play seeing you at the funeral and drink Andre's cellar. But there were no flights, obviously. And then a few days later, my mum, very suddenly, got very sick. She'd just turned 71 and is or was as fit as a fairly fit fiddle, and so it was quite a shock and a bit of a nightmare for my close and large family, because mum and dad live in West Australia, and a lot of us do not. But luckily there were some flights, so my sister and I and our families had to get a bunch of exemptions to travel, and then we had to stay in a house for 14 days to make sure we weren't carriers of the pandemic, and some other stuff happened that isn't for public consumption, and basically it felt like things were falling apart. But, lemons into lemonade, 
the house had a garage, and my sister and her husband are filmmakers, and we decided to use that time to make the music video for that song, Airport Piano. And Yamaha sent us this shiny black upright, and we sanded it down and painted it up and made a little film. And as many of you know, that piano there is the result of our efforts. And we're going to sell it and make a bunch of money for charity, lemonade for the less lucky, etc. I know a lot of you would have seen the speech I gave some years ago to UWA graduates. It somehow became known as Nine Life Lessons, which is more pompous than I meant it to be. But then again, that could be my nickname. Tim, more pompous than I meant it to be mentioned. <laughs> anyway, among the many bits of sophistry in that speech, I said, there is only one sensible thing to do with this empty existence, and that is fill it. I know I'm quoting myself, and I'm sorry. Actually, here's a good quote for you. There are few things more tedious than a man compelled to quote himself in discourse. Do you know who said that? Me, that was also me. <laughs> Just then. I wrote it down this morning. Anyway, this music video we made in quarantine shows a familiar, hairy, 45-year-old man trying with increasing desperation to fill a blank canvas to unpack his heart with words, but the words he is scrawling increasingly reflect his temporal panic, his midlife crisis, his self-loathing, his desperate anxiety for his anxious kids, his despair at his own compulsion to keep achieving and accumulating, his fear that time will run out before he fills in all the blanks. And time just keeps ticking away, and all the while, outside our bubble, outside our garage, my mum was ebbing and flowing, her own bone marrow building armies of asshole cells designed to destroy her, like Trump voters working with passionate patriotic frenzy to accidentally destabilise their own nation. A bunch of amazing doctors brought her back from the brink. Mum, that is, not Lady Liberty, who is still critical. And she's doing good, my mum, and she and we are very grateful. I know there are people watching this who have lost loved ones in the last year to COVID and or other shitful things. And I send you my love in all its digital uselessness and I only hope they were old enough that it's bearable. I refer to this next song as a physicist's wedding waltz because it's about how committing to your partner is actually a commitment to watching them decay. My dad, who's a doctor, loves it, despite the fact that it came out in the week of my mum's diagnosis, and despite the fact that it's arguably kind of bleak. But he doesn't think it's bleak, and neither do I. We think it's romantic. Because romance to me isn't about escape. It's not about pretending the real world doesn't exist. Reality deserves to be looked square in the eye, and if you can hold its gaze and still find beauty, that's romance, isn't it? They should be here today, my mum and dad, and would be if it wasn't for all the goddamn fucking reasons they can't be. This song's called Apart Together, and it starts with a classic tale of accidental cryogenesis. KCRW On the way to a show Heard the story of an elderly couple Found dead in their mobile home They'd been there a month, they say Seemed to be no decay I guess the upside of freezing to death is that you tend to stay that way Locked in each other's arms Eyes closed and face as calm They may have lain there till spring If it went for the ping of their smoke alarm God sure works in mysterious ways Died of power bills left unpaid Found by a neighbor who heard the ping Dropped around offering double A's mm, I think this could last for Yeah. 
entropy If you promise to stay with me I'll give you my heart knowing things fall apart Praying you will decay with me Locked in each other's arms Eyes closed and faces as calm In the morning a new life will dawn So maybe don't set the alarm Baby, I think this could last for Yourself. 
I've been writing songs since I was about 10, give or take. And this next one was written about halfway between then and now. When I wrote it, Sarah and I were living in Melbourne, and I was playing in a cover band called the Sea Monkeys and in a jazz rock fusion band called Boogie Tribe. My own band at the time was called Rosencrantz, which is the kind of mistake you make when you grow up in the grunge era, wanting to be a muso but digging Shakespeare and Stoppard more than Pearl Jam. At that time, I was playing my piano through distortion pedals, kind of trying to imagine what the strokes would have sounded like if they'd not had guitars. And I was trying to shake off Ben Folds because for a few years there, I felt like there was no point trying to write anything when he was in the world because he was just so fucking good in the way I wanted to be good. If I had to list the artists who had the biggest impact on me in my formative songwriting years, it would probably go Paul McCartney, John Lennon, Freddie Mercury, Ben Folds. Paul was busy and John and Freddie otherwise engaged. May I present to you one of the greatest singer-songwriters of our time, Mr. Ben Folds. COVID's pretty controlled in this part of the world, um, but we're still not really hugging. No. Even though you're known to be a really touchy-feely guy. Like, you love a hug, don't you? Just, sort of, just want people it's all It's a shame about you. all this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is an old song, and uh, I'm incredibly grateful that, uh, that Ben could come and play with us. What a fucking thrill. Ha! Beautiful head of yours. What's going on? What's going on inside that beautiful head of yours? I'm gonna tell you about my f fancy queen. I met my baby, we were just 17. We were still wearing tied our shirts and white jeans. Uh huh. I know the smell of her hair. Come in pairs, uh-huh I know she doesn't know her left from her right Yeah, I know everything about her and I Know what she does in the shower, yeah I can tell what's going on around her But I don't know what's going on Inside that beautiful
is a song about trying not to have sex with other people. confess that I find your casual caresses and that pretty dress pretty hard to resist and Christ what a night I think you're pretty high I know I'm pretty pissed but I'll take lonely tonight though I'm not denying I hate being alone even so I know regret in the making you're one of those others I swore I'd forsake and although this extraction is taken a great act of will i got a girl has my heart in a house on a hill so though i am hungry and tempted i'm sorry i'm not gonna bite I'm gonna take lonely I'll take lonely tonight though I regrets that I did and more often take up these chances for what is life for but to shack drink and dance and teenager me would be screaming his pants up begging me to stay but my girl has my heart in a house half a planet away and I'd rather murder than hurt her so sorry though it feels so right I'm gonna take lonely tonight Odysseus wasn't strong enough to endure the siren song And so he made his sailors tie him to a mast And Jesus spent forty days and forty nights And he stood his ground and fought his fight And the devil tried but couldn't break his fast If this is true The devil should have offered him you God damn it. I'll take lonely tonight in my 3.5 star boutique hotel where I will spend 25 bucks on mini bar snacks and pass out on my phone then waking for hours or so soaked in relief to find i am alone 
With only the wrappers of Pringles and Snickers for which to atone Blissfully lonely When you are an astronaut, which for clarity I am not yet, it is reported that when you get far enough away from the planet, you will experience what's known as the overview effect, a cognitive shift in awareness that gives you a moment of extreme clarity. The experience of seeing the Earth, this tiny, fragile, impossibly unlikely ball of rock, suspended, silent in the unimaginably lightless void, protected by a transparent skin of atmospheric gases. It'll change you, so they say. I think being on aeroplanes gives us a little taste of this overview effect, a sense of perspective, a bit more clarity about what's important. Although if altitude and geographic transition give people insights, the frequent flyer lounges of the world should be packed with the wise, whereas in my experience, they're packed with men making performatively aggressive business phone calls. There's a fridge magnet for you. Dance like no one's watching. Make phone calls like a frequent flyer. <laughs> I'm always more emotional on planes. I was once crying so hard that a flight attendant came and asked me if I was okay. No, I wasn't fucking okay. I was watching Marley and me. <laughs> this song starts in the air and hopes to stay there. Could I be more of a cliché? 40,000 feet above Nebraska Scratching lyrics on a napkin Praying that this turbulence will spare my wine The plane is almost empty but for 320 other humans All staking their existence on a couple of dozen rivets Straining between fuselage and wing A fact we're only coping with by drinking If this plane goes down I Hope that I'm one of the cool ones Will I have the nerve to play the clown If this plane goes down if this plane goes down Remember me as someone who tried To find a balance between self-loathing and pride Dug too hard for love at times So if it ends in flames and fuel Please tell my kids I've kept my cool if my time is up and this plane goes down 
If this plane goes down as we hit the ground, I want to be smiling, happily Hades bound, as this plane goes down. If this plane goes down, remember me as someone who cared, often but not always about his hair. Self-righteous when shit wasn't fair So if it ends in fire and glass Please tell my kids I went down classy If my time is up and this plane goes down I've no regrets as such It's just a shame I've so much still to do if my youth was wasted on me, I don't care Cause I wasted it with you, my love And from up above this planet, looking down The world reduced to greens and brown Toy trains and paper mache towns And just for now, the trials of humankind Dissolved by altitude and wine I really think that I'd be fine If my time is up And this plane goes down If this plane goes down I hope that I can get people laughing Will I have the balls to tool around If this plane goes down If this plane goes down Remember me as someone who went down With fair results but grand intent Found his meaning in how phrases can be bent to the will where will my remains be sent to be eventually dentally identified so if this flight should end in tears please tell my kids I felt no fear and tell them that this smoke will clear and tell them He'd even spill a drop of beer If my time is up And this pain goes down If my time is up And this pain goes down This may come as a shock to you, but I have to admit that sometimes, just sometimes, I talk too much. <laughs> Especially when I've had some wines and the conversation turns to a topic that gets my goat, like fucking goat couriers. Every now and then I think about my fans in Japan or Russia who have English as a second language and I'm not sure what they'd make of the phrase, gets my goat but at least I can feel comfortable knowing they're as likely as anyone to be amused by the idea that goat couriers get my goat. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I often wake up on mornings after dinner parties with a slight hangover and a sinking feeling that the previous evening I talked too much and stayed too long. Sarah is generally keen to confirm this suspicion, bless her honest heart, so I decided that, should I live as long as some of my more tenacious ancestors, that phrase could be my epitaph. Timothy David Minchin, born 1975, died 2073, talked too much, stayed too long. My initials, you'll notice, are TDM, 
tedium. My parents had me pegged. I also thought it would make a good hook line, but I couldn't figure out how to use it, so it sat alone on a scrap of paper in my cardboard box of homeless lyrics for some years, until recently I decided rather pompously that I would write a song about where I've come from and where I'm going. I figured that it would be my play that funky music white boy, only no one will ever sing it at karaoke, partly because it's very specific and partly because the downbeats of the lyrics consistently work against the downbeats of the music, which people find difficult, especially when they're drunk, which at karaoke they're legally obliged to be. This next song is both an admission of guilt and a cry of defiance from an almost middle-aged white guy who is still trying to figure out when to shut up and when to speak up. Yep! to James Hazelwood on the uh, upright bass. One, two, three, four. Don't want to be in your club if you take me as a member. I'm not even slightly interested in whether I'm remembered. I say ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Uh. Give me a tombstone if you fail. You must say a pill as a clown. Too much and stay too long. Back home in Perth, I play piano down at Cafe Piazza. Swallowing second and smoking, singing standards by the masters. Learned that every lyric's sacred, that loves everything. And that three drinks makes you straighten up and forget your swing. Until my crowd scared the suits away and I play my own songs. And then we talk too much, stay too long. Moved to Melbourne with my missus after locking her down Felt like a very little fishy in a very big town Barely scraping by on corporate gigs and quaint cabaret Playing keyboards in a cover band until 3 in the a.m. I was never really suited to them top 40 songs You know I talk too much and play too long Don't wanna be in your club if you take me as a member not even slightly interested in whether I remember I say ashes to ashes, dust to dust uh. Give me a tombstone if you feel your must say a pill as a clown wrote some songs We talk too much, stay too long To my island of the Ember in 2005 Played to 35 paying punters on that opening night But to And Edward Scissorhands Dude from the paper said that digging me was wrong He said I talk too much and I stay a little bit too long Fuck that, I played the Albert Hall and Wembley I played basements and bars I've been to Hollywood and Broadway Met those A-list stars I shared cigarettes with knights Shot tequila with dames Found I'm more interested in laughter Than in hotness and fame So long as you got irony Stay way, way too long. long. Don't wanna be in your blood if you take me as a member. I'm not even slightly interested in whether I'm a member. I say ashes to ashes, yeah. Dust to dust, give me a toast. So if you feel your must, say I'm here as a clown in your time songs. No, it's all too much. Whistling wine to send their dogs after me. I've been a bigot and a faggot. I've been smug and ugly. I'm a long haired lefty joker and a smoker of bongs. And I talk too much and stay too long. 
super fuck that live fast, die young shit I plan on getting rickety Baby, I intend to stick around Till all you pricks is sick of me And when they come to wash my old man balls And feed me mashed banana They'll find me in the common room Playing blues on the piano Same old three chords and cliche fucking runs And I'll talk too much to stay too long in my little book, uh, no air in my little lungs. Uh, so we're going to play one more song. This is a song that I wrote for a TV show <laughs> that um, a lot of you hopefully will have watched if you're here. Uh, it's called Upright, and uh, you should watch it if you haven't because it's, uh, it's good and, and you get to see me naked, which I think is what the world needs now. And. Uh, and there's this kid in it called Millie Alcock who will say, uh, uh, change your life. Um, and when I first wrote this song, it was very much about the episode five of Upright and the narrative of Lucky and Megan, the characters. And then we started touring it. These guys, Sarah and James and Benny and Dane and Matt and Jack. And there was a whole other experience, which was feeling how audiences responded to it which I think was well. It was very silent, so I'm imposing my optimism on them. And then, uh, and then our tour manager, Greg Weaver, uh, died, and he really loved this song, and he was very young and shouldn't have died. And uh, this was the last song he ever mixed, and suddenly performing it had this whole other heightened weight. And, uh, and then this fucking year. And uh, it just keeps meaning different shit to us, uh, and it'll mean something totally different to you, but it's still, I guess, about this idea that loss has mass, you know, bumper stickers. If they would let me trade, I'd give a year for half a day, just curled up on the sofa with you. Wander down to Cottesloe, eat fish and chips in the final glow. I hold my breath for I forgive you. Sometimes I feel you with me in the dark, and your face is in the faces of the strangers walking by me. In the park And reflected in your eyes Is all my love and all my lies Is all my promise and my pride Is all my fear and all my fight Is all my dread and my denial So though we cannot be together, I know that I will carry you wherever I go. I will carry you, Lord knows. I will carry you. I will carry you I 
reflected in your eyes is all my love and all my lies is all my promise and my pride is all my fear and all my fight is all my dread and my denial so though we cannot be together I know that I will carry you wherever I go I will carry you Lord knows I will carry you I I will carry you It strikes me that's what should happen there, shouldn't it? Credits. <laughs>